You are listening to Single Smart Female. This is Jen, letting it all hang out for your love life, examining your dating experiences, and answering your hot topic dating questions. Just you and me. No topic is off limits and no filters involved. I am here to help you do dating on your terms. If you have a question that you would like me to answer or would like to immediately upgrade your love life with our collection of classes and exclusive merchandise, meet me over now at singlesmartfemale.com. Hey, hey, single smart female. It's Jen, your romantic fairy godmama, and I am joined today by none other than Jen. The other Jen. Jen number two. And by the way, no, it's not. I'm not, you know, splitting my personality. <laughs> right. I don't have multiple personalities. Jen is a real woman. I am real. Uh huh. <laughs> I don't have different voices that exist in my head and then come out onto the podcast. Um, right. If you hear us talk enough. at the same time, that's because we're two different people. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. It's a meeting of the minds. <laughs> right. <laughs> We'll see how this all plays out. (laughs) We do have, though, a very important listener question, and I am excited to address this listener question because it comes from none other than Miss Very Confused. Ooh. Yes. Miss Very Confused. She's 34. She currently lives in New York. Okay. And she admits that she's kind of focused on a particular guy right now. Now, my favorite part of this entire submission is how did she find out about about (laughs) us? (laughs) and she said from my friend she got sick and tired of giving me love life advice (laughs) and one day she told me to google jen burton and listen to all of her podcasts i have to say miss very confused that your friend is the most brilliant woman in the entire world genius Genius. for sure (laughs) genius okay she writes dear jens oh boy bear with me because i'm a talker (laughs) well my dating history has always followed the same pattern i gave a lot didn't receive much back i had to settle for that and fake my happiness i always tried to fix the guys and ended up hurting myself along the way i'm a corporate lawyer i meet people every day some very attractive and smart and so very on but none of them interest me i don't date multiple people at the same time i tend to focus on one person and i know where i go wrong but i can't help it I do have a life outside of work. I keep it pretty busy so that I don't feel lonely. I like to travel, work out, cook for people, and read. I don't have time for people's BS anymore because my last relationship was an eye-opening experience for me and made me realize that I have to focus on my own happiness. Fast forward to the week after my ex and I broke up. It was a wild week. I was going out on dates every night having the time of my life. It was like the lion was lioness. We're going to say lioness released. I met these guys online swiping right. And at one point I got a random message from a guy that was totally not my type, but his profile was kind of promising. Mind you, I said, I hate wasting my time, but the timing was bad because I was already getting ready for a date and I ended up going on the date, had a good time with a guy, but it felt more like a friendship connection rather than something else. So the date ended. I got home and messaged the other guy. There was something about him. We agreed to meet that same night. So I got into a cab and went to meet him at a bar, had a drink, and there was this crazy connection between us. To cut it short, I went to his hotel and, well, things got busy. Busy. Brown sugar, brown cow. (laughs) (laughs) And then I went my way. He was in town for a couple of days for work. So the next day he wanted me to drop by his hotel again, which I really wanted to, but I felt like he should make an effort as well. That didn't happen, but we had great phone sex experience instead. It was really unexpected. He went his way the next day, and, well, I had my life. We kept in touch. All this happened a while back. We talked, just texting, by the way, about meeting up again and that both of our jobs are crazy, require a lot of traveling, and the schedules most of the times don't match. It took me a while to finally take that leap of faith and fly to see him for a weekend a couple months after. All went well. We spent time together. Seemed like we liked each other's uh, company. And sexually speaking, it was fireworks again all the way. Fireworks all the way. We then agreed on meeting again afterwards, but scheduling and timing did not match. My job moved me closer to him in the same, she says country here, but I'm thinking she meant county. Because if I understand, she's in New York, so 
which was just a two-hour train ride. We have kept in touch more or less, mainly texting and flirting, but he has never called and neither have I. At some point, this all got so predictable. His two-line messages and sexual meme exchange, that kind of made me say whatever to all of it. My life doesn't stop just because I don't get a text. I mean, I did get on with my life and my job and my traveling and some dating here and there, but nothing serious. He was the one that always initiated the conversations, so to speak, but it frustrates me that they're not even real conversations. I don't want to feel like he is a sexual meme exchange pen pally. You know what I mean, Jens? Bottom line, it's been about a year and I don't know much about him if only about him sexually. He insists on meeting up and seems like he really wants to, plus he seems very disappointed when we aren't able to. I would like to see him, but I feel like he is not stepping up his game to get me back to being interested and excited and to want to see him. Obviously, I've never told him any of this because I'm afraid of how he would take it. I just want a bit more commitment and consistency and to be more involved. It's easy to say I want to meet up and all that, and just stop there, but I want more, like a call, you know? So to show interest, if you're really interested in a person, I don't know what to think. I'm sorry for the long email, but I really need help. And then she further says, I don't know why I suck at my love life, but I can have a successful career. So kudos to you for your successful career. And I'm actually going to switch gears to Jen. And I, Jen, I want to know what you think. All right. All right. So, Jen, her name was Miss Confused, is that right? Miss Very Confused. Miss Very Confused. Very Confused. Aw. And she's 34, lives in New York, and is an attorney, right? Indeed. Okay. So, I think this is kind of a common thing for women who are successful in their careers. We get into this energy when we're in our careers that we are action takers. Something's going wrong, we make a plan on how to make it right. And I think that's fabulous about women and helps us to achieve great career success. But you kind of have to change it up in your romantic life a little bit. I guess I'm wondering to myself, is she giving too much? As she said, she's had in the past that pattern. Is she putting too much energy towards this? And somewhere in her message, she said that she was dating others. But I want to say that she said that was after things slowed down with with her love man. She definitely didn't mention it. I will tell you right now that Miss Very Confused, although I adore you and I'm excited that you're here, I'm going to tell you right now that you're not giving your mantraage a real opportunity. And you did spend a lot of time here justifying why you didn't, but you haven't actually provided any good reasons for why you're not mantraage dating yet and really enjoying your love life. Yes, that's exactly my same point too, Jen. When you're dating more than one guy, if someone is frustrating you, you focus on the guys who make you happy and, and light you up. Essentially, you're saying to the universe, to your higher power, when you focus on the guys that are treating you the way you want to be treated, this is the kind of treatment that I deserve. This is the kind of treatment that I expect and I want and that I am willing to accept in my life. When you focus on the guys that are just doing the other stuff, I want to come back to the fact of how things are kind of being set up with this man at the same time. Okay. All right. So, yes. And I sort of want to touch on that too. I'm wondering if, and Jen, I guess maybe you can give me your opinion. I'm wondering, was it probably a better choice to schedule a date for a different night than the same night that she was out on a different date? What do you think about that? I think in the future, that would be great. I don't definitely don't want to fault her for doing it. I understand why she do it. She got really excited and was in the moment she was on a, a dating rampage from, you know, leaving her ex. So I don't want to fault her for it. But in the future, she might consider doing something a lot differently. And instead of just showing up for the sexual encounter, because I see that you enjoy the sex, the sex is awesome. But you need to, have to learn how to navigate the dating and the courting first until you add the sex component into it. So you there's no problem with having sex right away with somebody when you know how to navigate the other part that doesn't make you feel crazy so that you can actually learn how to date. So if you have sex with a guy, then then you go out on a date kind of thing. And what happens is you've already kind of brought it. At, this is what I was going to discuss is you set the precedent and you have set the precedent here that all the two of you do together is have sexual encounters. So, yes, that's what he's leading with because he thinks that that's where your turn on is at. 
you're expecting a guy to be the one to lead on something when you have basically shown him that you're more interested in the sexual piece than you are anything else. He might not have any idea at all that you're interested in a lot more. Guys are really getting the ideas now because women are stepping up and filling the space that, you know, that we want sexual hookups too, that don't include relationships and dating and all that kind of stuff. And he might very well not get that you would like something different. Right. And I have to wonder the in the interaction and text messages where she's feeling like they're boring and predictable. I have to wonder if her responses to his messages are boring and predictable. Yes. Or don't encourage him to step up, be playful, be funny. And mantraj dating can really help you to not get anxious about a text that you might receive from somebody that you really like and help you relax and respond in a fun, playful way. Mm -hmm. Automatically, if you enjoy it, he's going to enjoy it. Plus, that gives him permission to do things differently with you. There are a lot of men, especially because of the narrative that's going on right now and the interaction between men and women, they're very scared to step outside of what has been already set up with a woman energetically. Let me clarify that a little because it all sounds kind of hocus pocus and woo woo. Meaning the atmosphere between men and women is more conducive to men not being as forward with women anymore because it could be received incorrectly. It could be received in a way that she ends up being offended. So he might be doing all the normal stuff and he might not be taking the lead on that, but just by doing something a little different with them and your communication and having some fun with that, you've basically given him permission to do something different as well, okay? Because he doesn't want to make you super uncomfortable. He doesn't want to offend you from everything you've told me about him so far. Do something different with him. Instead of being pissed off at him for not taking the lead on everything, just understand the nature of everything that is going on and teach him through your interactions. You don't have to actually say you need to do this, this, and this, but teach him through your interactions that you are very responsive and you enjoy the playful communication with him and something different and, you know, be snarky, funny. Instead of sexual memes, send funny memes, send silly things, all kinds of stuff. Introduce him to another side of you. To be honest, all you've introduced him to is your sexual side, which I know is fucking hot as hell. I get that. But he hasn't seen any other piece of you because you haven't let him yet. I know you might be saying, well, he hasn't asked. Well, maybe he thinks that that's the only piece you want to offer him right now. Otherwise, you'd be sharing those other pieces with him. Yes. And to piggyback on that, Jen, I don't think that the ladies or maybe they do, but maybe they don't realize just how powerful we are as women and how quickly we can shift the energy of the conversation or shift how things are going. In her message, I know she mentioned that they didn't really have, she didn't know anything in depth about him. You could do something like, hey, let's play a game. Let's send a random fact about each other every day on text. You can somehow incorporate ways to get to know each other better. Very simple ways too. Yes. Because one of the things she did says, I don't have time for this. And every time I hear that from a woman, I love you. I adore you, ladies. We don't have time for the things that we do not prioritize. Okay. It's a cop out. It's a way for us to play small romantically and in other pieces of our life. You absolutely 100% have time. Why do I know this? Because all of you hot ass ladies out there, when you find a guy you're really attracted to, you stay up till four o'clock in the fucking morning on text messaging. I know you have time for the things that are important to you and that you want. So please, ladies, please stop telling me you don't have time for this. You have time to date. Yes, you might have a very full schedule. You need to be ruthless about what is in your schedule and get rid of shit that's not. And then prioritize the pieces of dating and make it really fun for you. Please don't tell me you don't have time to mantourage date because mantourage date is just going out with more than one guy. We say we don't have time for mantourage dating specifically when we're not willing to explore our options, which means we'd rather hyper-focus on that one guy and make ourselves absolutely batshit crazy and nutty instead of giving men the opportunity to step up for us and, and saying to God, the universe, to your higher power, I want something fuck tons better than just the meh kind of experience in relationship and dating. Jen, I was such a culprit of that. Oh, I don't have time. I'm too busy. Actually, my schedule is probably three times busier and I am dating four guys. I, I know. I'm really proud of you. Thank you. 
<laughs> Do you have a favorite right now? You know, it's it's sort she of got thinking. she got all coy when I said that too. I mm, <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know what's interesting? You see on like the Bachelorette where sometimes it, one guy's a front runner and the next week it's a different guy. Yes. That happens for real. Yeah, in it does. Real life. So it happened with my husband a lot. Yeah. He was not always the front runner, ladies. He was not. <laughs> but eventually he won the race. He did. He <laughs> Well, he did for now. We'll see. <laughs> he better keep good. Yeah, Jen's got, Jen's got another agenda. <laughs> oh, no. Shh, don't tell anybody, ladies. <laughs> don't tell anybody. Yes, this is secret conversations with the Jens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, in conclusion, Miss Very Confused, I, I hear you. I feel you. I know what you're going through with all of this. All of the, with him, all of this with him can definitely be rearranged, but I would not do it. If you aren't willing to put yourself out there and actually mantarage date to learn the intricacies of and the ins and outs of mantarage dating in a way that works really well from you. Don't be upset when I tell you this, but give up your lame excuses for just hyper focusing on him because that's what they are. It's, and we all have them. We all have lame excuses for the pieces of our life that we want to get better but aren't willing to put the effort in quite yet. Because you can do this. And we do it. We put these lame excuses because we're secretly afraid we can't do it. But the truth is you can. You can create something incredible. And yes, he very well has a lot of potential. I would definitely include him in your mantraage, But I would not make him your sole focus right now. Especially when he is only seeing your sexual side. Jen, you hit the nail on the head. Okay, lover girl, it's time for the final thought on today's show. Don't expect men to want to step up for you when you haven't shown them who you are outside of the bedroom. This show is brought to you by Irresistibility, expert help for women with online dating. Are you experiencing inbox crickets or real life crazies? It's not you, it's your online dating profile. Let me help you do online dating that leads to real life love and romance go to helpmeonlinedate.com and i will send you the first two video chapters of my program for free hey lover girl this is jen again don't forget to subscribe to the show in your favorite podcast app as well as share single smart female with all of your single smart girlfriends and if you would like to play around and learn more about mantourage dating come see me at single smart Talk to you next time.